Cisco Success Tracks, CX Cloud and PX Cloud. Hello everyone, my name is Mutasim Billa Nawazish and I will be your guide through this session of understanding what Cisco Success Track is. Uh, so, so let's go ahead and, and jump into the agenda. So in this session, we will uh, see and check what is uh, Success Tracks, what's it uh, all about. Uh, we will go ahead and check uh, what is the Cisco lifecycle that they've defined for every every product or subscription. Uh, the success track levels that they have uh, and what are the two components of success track, uh, the CX Cloud and PX Cloud. And finally, we will go ahead and have a quick demo of the uh, Cisco CX Cloud UI interface. So what is success track in a nutshell? It's it, a uh, complete life cycle support and best practices for your Cisco investment. Now, Cisco calls it as of a digital platform as well. They also call it as of a single pane of glass where you, you're able to see all your assets uh, and inventory and you can do all the management of your contracts, licenses, uh, cases, you can see get advisories insights and, and uh, see compliance of your products without the uh, in compliance or out of compliance but i also define it as of a as of an interface or, or bridge between three parties uh for for better support of that product so i also call it as of a as of a bridge and interface between cisco uh and a partner and, and the customer so for every product, uh, you can have a complete life cycle, but still there are all three, these three parties are connected together to better support that product. Now, these are some of the features of it. It reduces downtime and risk. So, so what happens is instead of being reactive uh, to wait that something goes down, uh, you can actually be proactive and be predictable and take actionable that if in case any 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 risk is about to occur or any any downtime is about to occur or or if there is any risk uh to any product you are uh, so success track would uh give proactive approach of giving you advisories insights and compliance issues and get, you can get support from different sources which we would uh in a soon uh, uh, talk about so you are act proactively uh, in, in in the stage of supporting giving support for that product so so it gives you more uh, uh, business and operational efficiency you also uh, get a uh, learning and certification and lab uh, from this uh, from this uh, single UI even though Cisco has different other platforms uh where where you can create cases let's say for instance for a specific product for intersight you can go ahead and create a case out there for a product and you can go ahead uh, and contact cisco tag team from the smart and total care but you can also manage your cases from the cisco uh, cx cloud now you also have other areas where you can actually go ahead similar to those of case management you can do your learning uh, you can you can uh, like divnet is there sandboxes etc uh, and and follow uh, your tech team can also do the certification there but in lab etc but cisco has combined all that, that, that that's why they also call this as of uh, as of collaborative intelligence uh, in, in some definitions so they say they have combined everything together by when it when it's about the asset management contract uh, case management, learning, certification, life cycle, follow up of a uh, for a product. So in this slide, you can see the complete life cycle journey of any product that is actually being purchased by a customer, uh, that or that is going to be purchased uh, by the customer through any any Cisco partner. Now, initially, the customer would go ahead through the left side of the cycle, which is the the, their initial needs, they evaluate those needs and select appropriate products uh, for, for their needs, align those products and eventually go ahead and purchase uh, the product. So the customer 
uh, would after the purchase of the product, this is where where the uh, the engagement of the success track uh, come in from the onboard on the right side onwards. Now, because success track uh, to get support and do the management of the licenses, contracts, assets, etc., etc., you would have to have the purchase already been done so that you are eligible and able to to leverage the Cisco success track or specifically CX Cloud UI. So so initially they would go ahead uh, and onboard those products and, and implement them in their infrastructure and then they would uh, try to use it and they would actually get engaged of, 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 of fulfilling their business needs in this stage uh so so engagement is where they will try to align their business needs with their with their product that they have invested on and this is the adopt adopt is the very main uh and important stage here that the customer would have to uh, adopt the product because if they do not adopt the product they would not go ahead and renew it uh in the later stages because because it may not fulfill their business needs so they would have to uh, uh, adopt the product and then there is optimized stage where uh, where the product has to needs to be fine-tuned or granularly uh, uh, optimized based on the customers uh, needs if in case something is missing or leverage all the features of, of the product so once the optimization and adoption is done the customer is happy they will go ahead and think about renaming it and once again uh uh so there would be like uh partners or or any any other any uh third party entity would go ahead and and go ahead and advocate and recommend and then advocate for the customer if there is new upgradation or release or anything else uh into it so in this next slide, you would uh, see the suite of service solutions for, for complete success track. Now, you get accelerate a uh, path to success, minimize complexity and risk, transform the way customers work. But the very main four components are, which they call it collaborative intelligence. What I previously said is you get expert resources, you get expert, uh, expert guidance from, from uh, from different communities and from uh, from their uh, expert team, which we will talk uh, in detail in a sec. Again, I will I will show that in the UI. You get trusted support uh, from from uh, whether a group of people or one to one. I will talk about this as well. You get inside analytics of uh, from the AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning driven driven intelligence. So 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 there is a lot of machine learning and ai going on in ncx cloud uh, so you don't have to be worrying about something and it would already find out that if this thing is about to happen based on the based on the uh, based on the status of 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 that product you get contextual uh, learning uh, for the skill advancement and these are the two uh, uh, main components to it cx cloud npx cloud CX is actually customer experience uh, UI for for the for the customer and PX is actually uh, uh, for the partners. Uh, so so and, and these are the different architectures. Uh, so so the next slide is the the success track offerings. Uh, so there are two main levels of offering that right now they have level one and level two. They don't have level three support as of yet. They are still working. Cisco is still working on this one. Maybe they would go ahead and add some more uh, services into that. So for all those four main uh, uh, suites, uh, you get for, for level one, you get as the expert, which means that um, you would engage with a, with a group of experts and, and then you get support from them. However, at the level two, you get accelerator support which means that uh, uh expert resources which means that you you can contact cisco for one-to-one -one support so one engineer uh would actually be assigned for a specific solution from cisco for any issue that you are having or about to have or or support 
Now, trusted support, you get uh, different types of RMA. Uh, you can get 24 7 uh, after four hours um, uh, for, for uh, return material authorization. Uh, you can also get a uh, next business day as of uh, as of a support level. You, there are different SKUs that you can get uh, in both uh, L1 and L2. Uh, you can get uh, eight hours uh, or maybe next business day or two hours. Uh, and, and for uh, here the same, you can also um, fine tune this one based on the hardware requirements and software uh, requirements of your uh, product. You can get a uh, life cycle and asset view uh, on level one, whatever in level one you get, you completely get that in level two, but you also get something more. So, so you get as the expert here, you also get that here as well. But other than that, ask, ask the expert, you also get accelerators. So same goes for the, for this, for the, for this, for this, and, and for e-learning. So, and we get contextual learning, you get e-learning here, but here you get remote practice labs plus certification prep for your tech team, but you also get e-learning here. So that's how it works uh, from the perspective of, of the offering support levels. Uh, the next page is uh, the six cloud is actually for customers, PX is for, for partners, but they will have a bi-directional real-time information exchange. So the customers would be uh, accessing this portal, the six cloud, uh, and the, the partners will be having access to their PX portal, PX cloud portal. But the customers uh, would have to grant access to the PX cloud to the partners so that they be able to see the assets, uh, the assets and, and the contracts and the licenses of the customer. So if they do not allow or grant access to the partners, the partners would not be able to see the status of those, the customer's contracts, assets, etc., etc. So uh, the the uh, this is this is uh, the uh, I think the final slide. Uh, so here at the settings care, if you click here on the right side, you would see uh, 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 a menu where you can actually manage your assets. You can group them. You can create users. You can you here is the partner access where you can grant access to your partners. Uh, data collection uh, is actually where you if, if there are actually two different approaches of of because CX cloud resides with Cisco in the cloud so so you have two main approaches to to populate the CX cloud one is if you have for, for we will talk about different architectures but if you're having campus network and inside campus network, you have DNAC as a, as a, uh, as a management co uh, controller. So you can turn on telemetry there and then do the uh, agent setup, etc. And then CX Cloud will pull all the information through the, from the DNAC controller. But sometimes what happens is customers, there, are, there could be customers that they would not be having uh, DNAC. Uh, so what happens then, there are flow collectors that has to be installed or configured on the products uh, uh, themselves, then from that, the CX Cloud would pull the information and populate it. But, uh, and, and the same goes for, for other architectures as well, like for, if you're having, uh, you can integrate your Meraki dashboard with it, you can integrate your InterSight, if you're having for uh, in data center, you can actually go ahead and integrate your Apic with it in ACI. Uh, so so uh, you can you can uh, you can actually also integrate the NXOS. Uh, so so all those uh, products could be integrated. Now now the only one I think right now, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, so data sources is also there. Uh, where you can uh, pull the information, do the config of your agents here, and and see the insights of of it. So so let's go ahead and dive into the uh, dive into the Cisco CX Cloud uh, UI portal. Uh, please keep in mind that right now I'm using a demo account, uh, so uh, it, it's not an actual account. It's a demo account. Uh, we are would not be able to to. Uh, add something specifically but i would visually show 
every 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 component of it let's go ahead and let me log in i think i'm out let me log into the and by the way the the link to access it is cx uh dot cisco dot com so uh b o p nine so so once you log in this is by the by the way uh, a demo account uh it's not an actual account uh but overall the the look is the same if you if whether you have an actual account or or a demo one so so on the on the top uh left side you would see all the architectures these are the architectures that, that are now is being supported by the cloud campus network is your campus uh, in, in uh cloud network this is where you would connect your uh, your epic actually the aci and the data center compute you are i think able to and uh, uh, connect your uh, intersite uh nxos uh, and ucs i think here so you have uh Meraki and integrate secure endpoints here so these are the these are actually the architectures and if you select each architecture you have use cases so these are use cases under under each architecture now from the perspective uh, the integrated uh secure secure operations right now i think they only have uh they only have endpoint protection right now uh as a use case uh added here they only have this one so ice is not uh their umbrella i think is not i think umbrella is also there but but uh ice is i'm pretty sure that they haven't uh they haven't uh, uh added uh to to enable uh or integrate ice ice uh, product into it so coming to the to the campus network so, so if you click on the my profile these are all the all the products right now you have right so 1806 products you have right now and uh you can see the status of each one we will talk about them and and on the coverage you have these are the contracts and the different types of support that you have so right now you can see i have cx level 2 for this contract i have smart net total care this type and this one for this contract but i do not have cx cloud as of a level 1 or level 2 i don't have cx cloud support here for this one so uh you can see this contract has level one this contract has no cx support uh it only has three years rma uh this one has l2 and this one has only smart network care this one has cx level two support this one also doesn't has uh, uh cx cloud these are the start and end dates the coverage status is actually active right now i do not have any inactive ones so they are all active now you can also see which are which of the contracts are non-success tracks for something percent these are the one that don't have but these are the one that are having a success track these contracts and in each contract if i click i would see the number of products there in each one so so this one has like uh 78 assets here different ones is uh, uh access points switches etc and uh and and licenses uh, you can see if i have any any there so coming back to the assets view now here you can see uh you can also leverage these uh avias where you can see the number of hardware that you have and in the number of um anything as a service you have so you only have these two and from the perspective of hardware you have these amount of products there how many of them are connected to your CX cloud? How many are actually not connected? So these are the ones that either has been disconnected or they are under a contract, but they are not connected. So 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 the coverage status for this one, this one doesn't has success track and this one has, but whether it has it or not, if it's connected, it shows us you can click on connected ones and if it's not connected you can check them out there 
these are the ones that are not covered and covered so these are the ones that uh, has success track and these are the ones that are not covered under success tracks they only may be having smart and total care or rma or any other type of support now you can uh, also see other details here about priority bugs field notice etc we will talk about so uh i cleared the filter so these are once again uh, all the all the products that i have right now so if i i can also get a 360 view of every product if i click on this product i can see uh the geolocation of that product the ip address the the product family product id product type the software version type of it whether it is covered uh under cx cloud level one or level two or not so if it's not covered if you say like this the ones that are not covered you click on any one of them they would say uh the support is not there so so you don't get cx support there so these are the ones that are there you get hardware details of the product um the blaze network modules the product etc etc you get the software details of it whether and you also see the the state of of your um uh operating system or, or or the product here right now that whether this you right now here whether this is in active state end of sale state or end of life state so you see you right now here but it was on this day as end of sale uh so so the last day to get support is this date so you get all these details if there is any advisories you get all that i'll come back to the advisory which is which is here uh but you can navigate and and uh get a 360 view of for that product uh of that product here as well and you can create cases directly for every product so i right now do not have permission here but if i had you can go ahead there would be an option of creating a new case directly uh, you can open a case for this specific product if you're having any issue with it. So, so the next, these are actually tiles right now. I missed this, I think. So, so you have assets and coverage as a tile. You have adoption life cycle as a tile. You have advisories. You have cases. Now, it, it, once you click on 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 the on the on the campus network, you you can go ahead and select a a use case so so if i select let's say campus network assurance i would be able to see only the products that are in this use case so so if i click on the net uh, the products that are recently being purchased and they are at the onboarding stage of their use case i can click here and and these products need to be supported to be onboarded and they are or if they are onboarded they are at this stage and they haven't been uh, they haven't gone to the to the uh implement and use stage so so if if you see there is one extra uh tile that is added which is right now only which is insights this is cool you get a lot of uh, things here but you don't have that for other uh for the other architectures so if i click on cloud you don't see the uh, insights uh, for for the cloud network you don't see it for for the data center compute you don't see it for hybrid you only you only see it for campus network this one so you talk about that the next style is adoption life cycle so if i click on adoption life cycle so so right now i've selected campus network architecture uh if i go ahead and click on my portfolio i would see old and then click on adoption life cycle i'll see all the architectures and under each one, I would see the use cases. So right now, for campus network, I have nine use cases. For cloud uh, network, I have three use cases. Uh, for data center computer, I have two. Hybrid one, uh, integrated, secure operations one, Meraki one. And you can see the base track or the life cycle journey of each use case. So if, if you click on any use case, you would see further details of it. So if I click on the campus network visibility right now, so you can see that this project, or you can say this product is right now at the onboard stage of its life cycle. So it's right now at the onboard stage. So, so for this product to go from onboard to implement stage, you need to complete this, this checklist. Now, if you click on any, any stage of this life cycle, all these things get changed 
on the right side, we will talk about each one of them, what they are. You click on use, they go ahead and change again. If you click on engage, they go ahead and change again. again. So right now I'm, I'm at the onboard stage for this. Now I have to complete this checklist. And even if you click on the checklist component here, they once again change because for 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 this step to be checked you can get this support on the right side if you click on the uh learn about cisco dna center this changes again complete your dna installation what needs to be done first upgradation installation upgradation connection connect it and then verify the telemetry collection etc so so let's talk about what they are on on the right side so you get community discussions uh where where you can uh, publicly get support from from public communities uh this is the ask the expert where i where i previously spoke about this is where you where you engage with uh, cisco experts uh in a group and then you can ask questions etc and then proceed and and these are some uh, video recordings as well that you can go ahead and for every every step of this checklist you can go ahead and, and get that support. Uh, you can get your e-learnings here, maybe how to get started. You can click on it. There is a complete course outline. You can launch the course. You can go ahead and see the blueprint of the course, uh, what, uh, what, what things are covered in this course. And, and you can also create your own virtual lab for, for remote practice to be before going and touching your production device or product uh, prior to that you can go ahead and emulate or simulate uh and and uh and actually uh create a lab first and foremost and practice things and then go ahead and deploy that into your production environment you can also get if, if you have level two support you also get this one which is accelerators so so for for this this accelerator is once again one-to-one uh, -one support you can get for every product uh, so you can contact Cisco and they will assign uh, uh, one resource uh, for any issue you are having or if it's implementation or config or any troubleshoot uh, they would actually uh, help you so if you click on the accelerators you can go ahead and request for one-on-one -on -one. Uh, you can define the number of attendees how many People would be attending from your side, whether you want it at the morning, afternoon time, etc. And and the reason of the contact and and the and the type of support you want. What is the issue? Uh, you can give a quick comment about it, and then they will assign a resource for you. So 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 that's what accelerator is. Uh, the next uh, thing, uh, the next style is uh, advisories here you actually get uh, advisories for any vulnerability that exists and into your operating system version uh, or specific feature of something so let's say you can see these advisories for for certain products you get the uh, the the impact level the severity level um the the version details the update the etc etc all that you get here how many uh how many assets are being affected for this so you get these vulnerabilities now these advisories are only for some specific features so so you also have beat notices here this is actually the advisories that you have is regarding the licensing a lot because if something is about to get expired or if there is any license that have already been expired etc etc you get those notices here and if there are any bugs to to a specific feature of your product or version of that you get the severity level the bug id and the detail of, of it and the number of assets affected so you can come here navigate and and based on the based, based on the navigation you find out that what steps are required what steps you can take uh, to to remediate this issue so let's say there is let's say strong control issue for a specific uh, for for an interface of a product. So you only one asset is affected. You can go ahead and maybe check the buffer of it, 
of that interface and take action. Uh, however, the severity level is low here. Uh, you have cases which you can go ahead and create a case here as well for all those products you can do the management of them uh you can see all open cases the closed cases so i think i yeah i think i am able to create but i don't i think i don't think i would be able to create a case but uh you can go ahead and and navigate and and uh let, let me go ahead and uh let me go ahead and check uh try to create a case for a product let me uh, get the serial number for this one maybe you can also by the way search uh, here as well for any product by name by product id by description uh, by ip address you can let's say if you want to find that out oh, you copy it and, and you come here and paste it so and, and you search it so it will automatically find uh, view the device or specifically directly go and create a uh, create a case for this product uh, or or you can see further details which where does this product uh, is located you can also search based on the id so th these are not uh, descriptive names right now as names but in your case production environment you would actually be giving them a, a descriptive name of based on the geolocation of etc etc so uh coming back to the case i think uh let's open a case so I'll try to find out so uh you can come here and create a case uh, uh so i think i won't do it right now uh but but you can easily create a case for this for this uh product now the next thing is the insights here at the insights you see the software uh, support the insight for, for for that software so so if you are having so so here you also see the risk level the severity level of that risk whether it's critical for which product and what is the reason the current the, it's a, it's a relating the the opec system which is ios 6 e the current release is this one that it's actually using the suggested one is this so you can go ahead and come here and take take action you can see all the risks that are under this release so you see so so you get you get no bugs but you are exposed to this amount of threads uh you you get nine advisories so under all those advice that we spoke of nine are related to this one regarding this uh because of the the older version of the operating system that i have uh feed notice i have one and and uh, features i have uh, this amount so you can go ahead and select this and go ahead and, and take action by saying that you would go ahead and upgrade uh, you plan on and and uh, and can try to upgrade your uh, so upgrade is actually required so you need to go ahead and upgrade uh, upgrade uh, this version over this you can also go ahead and chip the release notes uh, what are the the different uh new features over that older version so you can do that uh you can see uh the products that are uh at risk of going to crash so you also have these the risk is medium for this so uh maybe uh, maybe there is a memory outage or storage outage or any fan issue uh with a product uh you you see you go ahead and come here and see uh that these products are at at uh uh they're having this risk you can also navigate and check out what's the what's the issue so uh the contributing factors are these uh so if they are not important you could go ahead and exclude them uh for yourself of all or all reasons maybe you are aware that that uh there's a storage issue with a specific product or maybe any other issue and you don't uh feel that to be too much importance so you you would actually exclude that from the list so uh so similar at assets that are having the same issue you can check them here any faults uh 
that that are there with any products so since i do not have any any anyone at, at since 24 hours but if i check the 30 days i had nine falls so one was pki public key infrastructure which 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 actually failed to fetch the crl uh maybe it has expired the other issue could be maybe the epk has expired you can also go ahead and ignore this fault as well by saying ignore the fault maybe i am aware so i have this product maybe in my lab environment and the pk has expired or it's not the crl issue or this that etc and you don't feel this to be important you can go ahead and and ignore this fault for whatever amount of times or any asset or all assets so you can do that here. uh compliance you can see uh if if any product is out of compliance with with a certain technologies in 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 your infrastructure you can come ahead come and, and check them based on the configs maybe there is triple is not enabled on a product or you're not leveraging that feature you get uh you you come in and and check that that product is out of compliance passwords you haven't used let's say complex complexity on that ssh you may be using an ssh version one which is which could be uh which could be actually uh immune to uh very easy or well-known uh, exploitations or, or vulnerabilities so you can come up, go, go ahead and and upgrade change that from v1 to two, v version 2 uh so similar to that you can come uh here and check uh if any product is is uh in compliance or out of compliance you can also check uh waivers as well so so right now maybe maybe you have this and, and you think of that i should be notified that that uh, after uh, uh maybe in in a couple of days i should be notified or my team should be notified so you can go ahead and create a waiver here for this specific product or all the products you can come and select the product here and say that uh, i should be having a wave uh, at this date until this day this should be there you can create a important comment here uh so you can go ahead and save it i don't know if so yeah it has been saved so i think yeah so in nine days you would have to take an action on on this on this uh uh, uh thing now on the top right side you also you are also able to cross launch other platform suites so for instance you want to go to cisco spaces or configure uh uh your dnac app dynamics inter site mirror key secure etc so you can come ahead uh, here and cross launch cross launch them as well now the other uh you have your uh, profile and user uh here you can actually go ahead and contact cisco for it and here you can manage your profile and account so I think this is all about uh, Cisco uh, Success Track, CS Cloud, and PX Cloud. Now, PX Cloud. Uh, last thing is that uh, PX Cloud. So I do not have here, but as I showed, there would be a gear icon uh, here on the right top right side. Once you click on that, you would see a menu here where you would be able to grant access to your partners. If you select the partner, grant them access, and then the partners would where px.cisco.com be able to log in and see the uh, complete status of your infrastructure contracts licenses assets uh etc and if you needed any advisor they would also be able to support you on that uh this is also uh the six cloud uh agent overview uh how to configure that the setup is easy enough uh so uh this is the dnac for, for campus network actually all the devices would be uh the information would be in in the dna controller and this is uh you this is the method how you can uh deploy and implement sys cloud agent in your uh in your uh vm as a as a vm uh as a uh, as a in your esxi and and uh, or any other hypervisor that you may have 
uh, you can uh, you can uh, go ahead and and these are the hardware requirements. So Cisco is right now here. This is your actual campus network. Your DNA controller here. You would be sitting here. Your partner would be sitting. They would have their PX Cloud access. You would have your Cisco Cloud. The API gateway would be connected to the Cisco, uh, to the Cisco uh, data sources and telemetry has to be on on your DNAC or if it's uh, Intersite or if it's uh, Epic in ACI or if it's uh, any any other uh, product that you are having. So so these are the hardware requirements that you need this 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 this, and these steps are. Uh, to go ahead and implement it uh, would be is here. So that's it about uh, Cisco success track, CX Cloud and PX Cloud. Thank you so much.